Hello, good evening. My name is Ilma and this is from the Ilma Arts Channel Studio. I'd like to share with you today my poem devotional and an art talk. Uh, again, I, I started, uh, yesterday I was talking about abstracts and I'm going to continue on that today and a little bit of history, how I started being a, a painter. But I'd like to share first the poem devotional, which is entitled Spiritual Forces. This is extracted from Galatians 5 verse 17, which says, And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting with each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. And here is my poem entitled Spiritual Forces. Wherever there is good, there is evil. Watch out for the tactics of the devil. The, the more you want to carry out good intentions, the more the enemy wants to slay your motivations. The Spirit gives us the desires to do God's will, while the opposite force lurks and wants to kill. Be wary of these two opposing forces within. You might end up defeated and succumb to sin. And here is the essay part of the devotional entitled, Forces Within Us. We were created to be like God, holy. The forces of evil will try their best to stop us from doing what God designed us to be. To have victory over evil, we need to be equipped to fight the spiritual battle happening inside our hearts, minds, and souls. How can we guarantee victory in this war? The Bible tells us that it is God's Spirit that gives us the desire to do God's will and fight the sinful nature. We cannot get in battle in our own strength, but by believing that Christ paid a high price to save us. Prayer. Lord, watch over me so that I may never, never, ever be defeated by the enemy. Reflection. How do you deal with the forces of evil lurking inside you? And that is the end of the poem devotional today. And so we switch to the art talk. As you can see, this is... Uh, uh, I did this in 2013 as well. Um, one of my first abstracts for the year. Um, this is entitled Circles of Life. And I'll bring it closer to you so you'll have an idea um, of the texture. Because I will be talking again about textures and colors, the elements of uh, art, and how to look at abstracts and part of my beginnings as an artist. So today I'd like to show you closer so you can see. There, there you go. Um, you'll see the different circles going around. So we're dealing here with shapes, circular shapes. But you will see also how strong the colors are all mixed up together. And I didn't use a brush on this painting, but I did. No, I'm moving it here. I'll show you what I used on this painting. I used a different kind of, it's not really a palette knife, but I used a sort of a painting equipment that I saw in the hard store, it's, uh, in the hardware, and it's called an edge knife. So it looks like this, it's kind of wide. So what I did, on this painting, because I wanted to bring out all the circles, right? 
and um, as you can see, it's almost like there's almost always like a pit in 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 the abstract the the nice abstract works that I do. But in in this case, what I did was to just put all um, the acrylic colors on the canvas when it was all white yet. Yeah? I put it all there and then I I start moving these things like that. So all together the colors on each side. So I didn't put it one color after the other. They're all together spread on this space and I started moving it that way. Right. So I was so so pleased with the effect of the colors that came out because it was very spontaneous when I did it. It's not, it's not even planned what colors I will use. Uh, but at the point, that, at the moment that I was doing it, it's like I just felt like I was enjoying just putting all the different colors. But I had a base of red at the background before I did all the other colors. So as you can see, you know, they it came out nice because the circles. You see all the different circles. There's one there, another one there, another one there, and another one there. But you'll see the textures that coming out. It's how clear the textures are. So that's about abstract, the abstract work that I did. But I'd like to start and begin telling you the story how I became a painter. Um, actually, it was an accident how I became a painter. Um, I was already a teacher and I was taking up my master's degree in linguistics. And... Um, I've been in theater for quite a bit as a professional actress and uh, stage manager. Um, when our teachers in liberal arts assigned us to do a report, and she wanted me to report on theater because she knew that I was in theater, but I, I told her that I wanted to do something else, another part of humanity. So she said, did you want to do some paint, uh, to report on painting because I... You know, I had no other people to join me in painting, so I said, okay, I'll try painting. And in one of the occasions, I went to our National Museum in the Philippines, and lo and behold, when I was in that museum, there was like a 20, 30 by 30 feet um, of a, one of our uh, best artists in, in the 1800s. And it was uh, a picture of, um, it, it's, it's like a prison, a prison cell where bodies are being pulled out and you see all the blood and the dead bodies all over. And I was so amazed by how it affected me at that time that I was looking at the painting. And th this is a painting of one Luna, which is one of our... Uh, national artists as well in the Philippines and when I was looking at it I could almost smell the blood and I could almost smell the rotting corpses on it and uh, all the lines the diagonal lines of bodies being pulled out of the dungeon made me cry it just it just drew tears to me like for about 40 minutes to an hour, and I couldn't stop crying. Um, and, and, and that is what I'm trying to say, how powerful a painting is. When a painting says something to you, or stir an emotion to you, or stir a, an idea or a thought to you, that you can't forget that painting. So that started me to paint and went home. And I have been on uh, I've been on stage management for a while, so I knew how to work with colors, but I never knew how to draw a line or anything to do with drawing. So I experimented with colors because that was where I was comfortable with. And when I tried experimenting with colors, lo and behold, I came up with with the landscape, you know, and 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 I liked it. And I said to myself that. I would do something, not because I'm, I'm good at it, but because I want to learn how to do it. So I've been, you know, pretending that I'm a really good drawer and people are watching me. Sometimes I go on picnics with my son and I, and I sit on the park and I try doing something and people are laughing at what I do. But 
it didn't matter to me because I, I just continued uh, sketching and I knew some of my friends who I've always wanted to learn how to paint were never very encouraging for me to go on. But what I did was to paint or, or draw something every day like for like six years and that. So that was my school. That's how I started becoming a painter. On the sixth year, when I had one of my houses turn into studio to have it blessed by one priest in the Philippines, he actually, and my paintings, because I've been putting up paintings, and mind you, I didn't have money to buy art um, materials, and since I taught in a very exclusive school, private school for girls, you know, um, and these girls are just throwing away their colors, their pastels, their paper, and Sometimes I would get the paper that they threw on in, in the garbage, uh, and then I will iron it at home. And that's these are all the papers that I use. And I was raising my son alone, so I was a single parent, so I was very careful with how I spend my money. And so those are my beginnings as an artist. So by this, by that time that my house was being blessed, that priest bought ten paintings for me. So he was my first buyer. And that priest was always telling everybody in church whenever he had sermons that I am an artist of the century and I feel so, I feel so, you know, ashamed that he is claiming me as that. But he said he saw that potential in me. And since then, after a few years, I started teaching um, painting. I used to teach theater arts and English speech. And then... I shifted to teaching painting and I was doing curating all the artworks of my students and a few years later I started have to have my own exhibit and uh, lo and behold I was able to sell 35 paintings out of the 60 paintings for my first exhibit and I was not trained to be a painter I was a no-name painter but lo and behold and I'm sure that God has something to do with that so, I, that's the end of my art talk today. I'd like to invite you to check my website at www.ilmaarts.com. That's I-L-M-A-A-R-T-S dot com. Thanks for watching and remember that there is always a spiritual battle happening inside us. As, as, as um, the Bible says in Galatians 5.17. And that we need to be aware of this battle inside us and we need to be constantly in God's word so that we will be able to be victorious over this evil lurking inside us, enticing us to tempt and tempting us to sin. And have a good evening. God bless.